All right, some rogue trader. Uh, we killed a space marine. There they are. I mean, the chaos marine, but you know, is what it is. Same, same difference at this point. Uh, and his little entourage. After uh, doing one reload, granted, we did one reload, and it was mostly just because I made a horrible, horrible decision at the start, so it's I figured off to time. go through with it. And uh, after that, we had no problems. Granted, we did almost die in terms of like health and that stuff, but that's not too much of a problem because uh, end of combat doesn't matter. But since now we have Henrix here who just can act as a med kit at that point to get rid of the injuries. All good stuff. Um, it wouldn't really have mattered because I imagine we're getting back onto the ship immediately so we will get our injuries even if we had any back. But anyways, that was a cool fight. They're obviously extremely powerful but of course Cassia is god. Um, and most importantly we hit our new uh, archetype, so we'll be able to play around with some of these abilities. Arch Militant, so I want to be swapping around between your burst single shots and stuff like that. Um, and if we do all four, which we should have the ability to do, right? Uh, melee attack. Uh, we don't have an area of melee attacks. So actually, we can only get three here, so I'll have to figure out a, a better gun for um, her, but you know. Some bonuses there, at the very least. Cassia has now got Master Tactician. Um, yeah. And there's just some Fellowship Scaling party buffs. We got our Assassin now, which allows us to seek the opening, which will hopefully give Henrix a little bit more to do right now. Uh, we've got our Bounty Hunter here, which will, again, give us some, just some bonuses, basically. And us over here, we have finally started Grand Strategy, so I'm curious to see how this plays out, um, in terms of, like, the location stuff. Uh, and Avalard is Mr. Vanguard here, which has Unyielding Beacon. Um, it's basically just a uh, resolve bonus based on times you get shot. And you can also stack more temporary wounds on him, which is nice. Anyways, let's go take a look. I won't tolerate weakness. There's just a loot laying around. Okay, so there's some leftover ships. I don't think the one we choose matters, but just looking for some loose loot. Oh no, our actual ship. Shuttle's been burned and will never fly again. Pilot's body is stiff, hand still come to the letters. Good job. To the stars. Grand Viaduct for receiving a deemed guest is buried under the rubble. Alrighty, None let's get out of here. Stand in my way. Oh, apparently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a lot of damage. And more heretical stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff for heretical, but um, you know, we don't really have anyone that can use that besides Dira. And uh, yeah, last we saw, the solar system is probably. Uh, no longer a solar system, technically, because it's not orbiting a star. Uh, and the planets should actually, uh... <laughs> and our angular momentum and stuff like that, we're gonna... We should be seeing some interesting effects going on. Heading out the time scale here. Right, right, without this attractive force to continue course correct around our trajectory, we should, uh... Keep going off in some weird trajectories as planets. But luckily we have a spaceship now, which, you know, somehow is fine. <laughs> I thanks be damn for your life, your lordship, we'll most you gratify by return, truthful, zeal, and ready to care out any orders you have. Uh, what happened to the sun? <laughs> Lord Captain, we saw a number of ships approach the sun, black creations, inhuman make, amalgam of shark angles and edges, surrounded the star, and then, uh, this made the sun vanish into the void, yeah. Oh, Drakari. Okay. See Avalard's expression change until the shadow has suddenly fallen over him and rubbed the temple. So he didn't have enough troubles on a hand. The Xenos end of humanity? I mean, 
Yeah. A breed of the Aldari, the most cruel and devious of their kind. Okay, so they are related to Aldari. Yeah, design of the ship matches the description. He just said sharp angles, but yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking the uh, Necrons, but I guess there wasn't enough green glow for them to be. And the Necron ships are kind of like pyramidable, if I remember correctly. Uh, like all Xenos, the Ducari are a blind and faced galaxy, but their technologically superiority is indisputable. They abhor and fear warp sorcery, which is why they rely on creations of their twisted intellect, and many of those creations are capable of things that seem akin to sorcery to unenlightened eye. Seth of the Sun is one sample of what, example of what they're capable of. Now, are they in League of Horus cultists? Can rule out the poss that possibility. Drukari would never ally themselves with the arch enemy's worshippers. Had named one thing in humanity had Xenos have in common is they shared loathing for warp corruption. Situation calls for immediate action. We can continue this conversation later if you wish, but right now I believe you should assume command. This current situation. Navigator Sanctum is no longer empty, but the warp engine is still refusing to obey the Ingesiers. We cannot perform a war jump. May be angry and perhaps is lamenting the injuries it suffered. I will immediately initiate preparations for a prayer of service. If Yama Sunday grants me comprehension, I will appease the machine's breed of this vessel. Man's going to go tinker and repairs. <laughs> I always just find it so funny to just the tech freeze and all that stuff when they're talking about stuff and translating it to like what they're actually doing. Um. Uh, what's happening on the planet now? Auger operator, operators are reporting numerous uprisings under manifestation of the Arch Enemy's powers at various occasions on the planet. Based on the fact that communications picked up by Vox operatives, there is practically no resistance being offered by the Governor's forces. Millions of people are converting to the Blasphemous Final Dawn cult en masse and assembling in prayer circles. Alright, plan's dead anyway, so we'll just kill it. Uh, any hope of retaking the planet? Record my Norris is lost, situation deteriorating by the minute. We must leave the system as soon as possible. However, there are still people on the planet who have not succumbed to heresy and are worthy of rescue. Besides a small number of our own shuttles, we have the shuttle salvaged from the starport. Argenta's eyes flash. We must save as many as we can. This all happened for a reason. Saint Argenta, whose name I carry forever in trepidation, same for saving the people of a dying world throughout the power of prayer. God Emperor himself sent a star from the heavens that lifted the saint and her followers up into the sky away from corruption and death. We must do as she did, direct all our efforts to saving the people in the moment who... Those people who at the moment look to his heavens and hope for salvation. Lives of peasants are of little value. Our prime objective is to save the holy relic, the miraculous fusion reactor, and the electro priests who guard and tend to it. Abelard, uh, every moment we spend in proximity to a dying world, we're putting ourselves at risk. Your life is far most valuable. We cannot allow the dynasty to perish. Alright, what's Henrik say? The world is doomed, its inhabitants along with it. Disappearance of the star was the final nudge toward death. Yeah, if the star is gone, the planet's gone. That's just. That's <laughs> <laughs> Finale of the Cult of Dawn's final plans, I once witnessed a similar event. The world surrendered to the servants of the Arch Enemy and permitted corruption to enter too deep. At this moment, millions of people are bound down for those who promised them salvation, and they are willingly giving their souls over to chaos. Sacrifice enough, great enough to bring forth a daemon world. Only hope is stopping the process to retreat to a safe distance from the planet and conduct targeted bombing of the Electro Priest Monastery. If we blow up the reactor, a thermonuclear reaction will follow, the world's oxygen will evaporate, killing off the entire biosphere. In doing so, we will save millions from the souls of fate far worse than death, and we will save Riker by Norris from becoming an outpost of the Arch Enemy. Whatever fate you choose from- God, so much dialogue! <laughs> Whatever fate you choose from, world, I urge you to make haste. Lord Captain, the planet is burning a raging flash of crimson and purple, I can see it even from orbit. As I do, as do I see the swarm already upon us. With every moment we waste, it grows even more difficult and perilous to steer a ship through the warp's turbulent currents. I'm with the lady on this. Enough talking. Let's get out of here while we still can. Something lurking in the depths of your consciousness bristles up the passing thought of saving people. The spike of horror you feel takes your breath away as if they are planning to steal the prey of a mighty predator. The plan is already wrapped in the hands, stretching out the warp, and deserves to have a new master. Ooh. Okay. Um. I'm between the bumble I'm between the two most in conflict answers, which is nuking the planet or rescuing the tech priest. Um saving civilians is nice and all, but uh 
a little bit dicey here. All right, uh, which can we evacuate? Nobles you rescued have given their coordinates of shelters. You can find Aristocats and their families. Sergeant Mailer's troops will go control the crowds of frightened commoners and prevent the shuttles from being overloaded. Thanks to you, we have salvaged many shuttles from the starport that we can now use. Okay, if we've done that, then um, we might as well try to save some people. I think saving the fusion reactor is where we're going to go. Right, I know that immediately rules out, you know, blowing up the planet, and this is then going to produce a new Damon world, basically. Um, which is not good. It's very not good. Uh, so... I think both are good options here. Because they're dead anyways, pretty much. Um... But I think the reactor. And delay caused by loading and transporting a ship will cost us pressure time. Do not deceive yourself and indulge your vanity to doom billions eternal torment. Oh. Man, this is actually an interesting choice for me. Because <laughs> Right, so here's my thoughts about it. Is I'm trying to think of like what we're trying to take the characters like path down. And obviously I've been leaning a little bit more into dogmatic lately, mostly because I've been going with Henrix. Um Heinrichs, not Henrix. Um but I obviously really like the Adeptus Mechanicus, and obviously that would be a huge problem. Right, and right, a fusion reactor is huge. Like, in terms of, like, technology, it's, yeah, very important in this setting. Um... I don't want to be so angry at Hendrix, but we gotta, we're going to push back on him a little bit. And so we're going to go to Iconoclast here. We're not a dogmatic lapdog. Um, while I will lean into those options when they are kind of in the like brutal efficiency regime, which they are in this case, but we have a competing Iconoclast option that is not just save for the good of good. Uh, this is a also kind of a practical thing, right? The value of this reactor is actually a very tangible thing. Um, and probably the only thing of real irreplaceable worth on the planet that we can save. People, great. Uh, even if we save them, there's also a decent chance that they are, like, tainted by the chaos and warp already. Uh, so we're going to go with this. It's like the flicker of something beneath his sanguine mass, whether it be, does not seep into his dispatch voice. In that case, consider necessary prone to mark an arc enemy can infiltrate the ship with the priests escorting the reactor. Keep that in mind in the future. Cool. Yeah. Right, obviously we had some issues with Aurora touching in that stuff, and maybe this is going to come back and bite us, but right now I want to do something for this guy, because earlier uh, we didn't do the, like, stealth option. <laughs> due to everyone else's objections. So here we're gonna also get some Iconic class points this way. Uh, we also have some shuttles. Here, this will be our Iconic class thing. Um, nobles are great in terms of like resources and stuff like that. Actually, Okay, Heinrich, we'll probably be agreeing a few more in the future. 
I wanted to read. Um, a bit about the nobles and the commons. Okay, uh, I think we're going to go up to nobles. <coughs> Here's, uh, you know, justifying, justifying my atrocities. With the commoners, there are likely too many, right, because we speak about the shuttles from being overloaded. So we're going to end up taking, I don't know if we have to capacity to take all of the commoners, right? Which leaves kind of a weird, like, eh, 50 50 or whatever, you get a lot of that stuff. I'm pretty sure we could safely grab all of the nobles. Uh, we already have the nobles' families on board slash safe. So if we abandon them, we have kind of an awkward situation there, which they'll probably understand to some degree, but also very awkward. Um, Argento's probably going to be very unhappy with us. Um, but Cassio will probably like us more. We'll be a little bit more practical here. We'll grab the nobles. Um, there's just kind of more to gain from it overall, and we already have them partially saved. So they're done, we'll bring in linear capabilities. We have no more shuttles that we can use. Bridges and upheaval, technomats, prayers mixed together and talk uh, senseless cacophony. And servitors were hastily removed to harden crust with sacred urgence in the warp engine's apartments. In the middle of it all, Tomot sends Pascal with a data slate clutch in his hand, seemingly disconnected from the flurry of activity. Crew, heed the word of Magos Hunneman. Pascal, I kindly request to take charge of this mess. Thank you, your lordship. You are right. The change of when he addresses his crew, he now speaks of authority and resolve. Tech comrades, heed my instruction. Ma'am immediately subsides, the crew's actions fall into some indiscernible logic. The omnicide servants start working in sync, and by carnic clamor becomes a symphony of reports on the Magus coordinates like a stillful conductor. <laughs> so yeah, he was panicking a bit. Alright, I'm really done, Pascal. Omnicide guides me. Please take your place at a cogitator, Lord Captain. Uh, what are we doing? I studied the data and discovered the machine mode that was damaged as a result of the heretic sabotage. The function of the warp sextant was tampered with, and the sh ship's spirit, aggrieved by the violation of the right of operation, is now rejecting its calculations. I sought a way to rectify this error and concluded that your participation was necessary. Cogitator's system on the Temple of the Messiah are subordinate to the shell whose respiratory serves the machine we see, sir, yeah, see before us. Machine created for your predecessor and one that uses biological signature of dynastic blood in this computation. The spirit should recognize the ship's master and submit to its will. Should. Alright, let's just step up. Let's not make him doubt himself more. Huge machine in front of you is lit with dozens of vid screens and hundreds of lumens. Uh, the blinking light and endless rush symbols and digits on the gray background make your eyes water, a vague sense of alarm shimmers deep in your mind. Typical reaction to the layperson when confronted with the magnitude of the Omnicide's creation. Among with numerous controls, you see the mouth of a cyber gargoyle, the same as the gate of Warren Chamber. Servants of the Machine God, heed my command. Acolytes, prepare the inc pr incense instruments for the liturgy of machine spirit preparation. Propitiation. Yes. Center Techomats, recite the prayer to generate the current data report. Operators will be marked with capological protocol. On this I rejoice. I must inform you that for the purposes of safety, complete reassembly of the warp sex and its updating of status myth blessing are required. If this is not done, the launch to volume aggregate calculation errors could result in destruction of the data crypts. But, as we now have 100 hours at our disposal, we must omit this procedure. A minor deviation of right operation for the sake of appeasing the spirit. Also, I'm going to turn the music back down a bit, because it was great in combat, but when I'm reading a lot, it's a little bit much.
What must I do? Place your hand inside the third of your cognitive guardian, the cyber gargoyle, which has been assigned to the guard of forbidden data crypts. The vastic blood extracted from your veins will serve as a key to the data core where the machine spirit dwells. And to it, we will offer our prayers so that we might bypass the protective protocol for infective connections and launch a warp sextant. Walls of Dom Messiah know no exceptions, and so in this ritual, I will remain at your side to placate the wrathful machine spirit in whose abode you will be intruding. Follow my liturgist captain, and we may receive his blessing. The image of the vid screen before us changes as we get bit. Connecting one, two, three, success register seven eighty nine, blah, 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 ACT. Reach out and touch the keys on the instrument panel. Lord Captain, please, you'll anger machine spirit before you move the restriction. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I actually misread. Service of Messiah make now the offering to cleanse data crypts from machine spirits so they may fill with true and cal calibrated data. May Don Messiah have mercy on our souls. In meat solemnity, the acolytes offer up cleanse data crypts to the warp engine one after night, repeating pairs of exaltation. Um, after anointing the contracts with the sacred urgence, Pascal inserts them into the cogitator slots. Your head begins to spin from the holy sensor's foul smelling clouds of smoke and from the loss of blood that your cyber guard crawl continues to drink from you and the world swims before your eyes. Let this mechanism awaken in renewed purity. No. Train signals completely inconsequential to you, but clearly conveying something to the Magos. Is everything all happening? Alright, Magos? A few seconds when the data crypt mounts on a cogitator begins to emit sparks. A moment later, another data crypt does the same. The next person to flame and gives off foul smelling smoke. Around you, Dom decides service break off from the prayers and someone bursts into frantic pleading. The mass of errors in the warp sections calculation is destroying the data repositories. The offering did not appease the ship's spirit. The warp engine cannot be filled with the motive force. We are trapped. Perhaps an alternate Ryzen protocol or emergency launch of the auxiliary coil spends on a cogitator, but something in this pause reveals in. Yeah, movements reveals his desperation. If the other vid screens are filled with more and more strings of signals, the monitor in front of you blinks static image changes. Pascal's too engrossed in a ritual to notice. Read the information on the vid screen. Perturb reg, disturb reg, no normal operating system, operating press query. Query? What query? Cause your creaks in his coins, the sound is drowned out by the fire prisms and tapping into command runes. Injury rescue query. Oh. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna try to be a little bit religious here, follow Pascal's. Oh hello, Bashoon Spirit in the name of the Omniscion, the Emperor, reveal upon us reveal unto us your power and guard us against our doom. Pal echoes your sentiments of a triumph of sounds of my characterism. His next vocalization goes unsynthesized as he sees the vid screen begin to stabilize one after another. The strings frantically galloping across the green background are replaced with stable imageries. images of regularly updating stats reports. Only one monitor remains inexplicably red. Registering. Uh, warp sex is activated. Registering data stream stabilizing. Zero data errors firm. Reporting the warp engine is ready for translation. I am also reporting evidence indicating a Category 3 miracle fulfilling this criterion. Uh, thou shalt witness the mechanism that toils in glorification to its fullest and defiance of deactivation. Lord Captain, Ravor here. Oh, yeah, our pilot. <laughs> um, the crew has almost finished carrying out the orders given earlier and received confirmation from the engineering halls. I don't know what you did, but the warp engine's up and ready to go. Ready to begin translation to warp your lordship. What just happened? I emphasize the ship's spirit, heard our prayers, and intervened. It summoned the power of the Omniscient to do something beyond my comprehension. I know little of the Omniscient's sacred machine, so what I saw on the screen looked strange. Non standard output from information loss in data cores. Servitors use as data conduit could not always fully lobotomize. Fragments of their thoughts can appear in pure code. Interesting. Well, let's praise Pascal's faith a little bit. I hope you'll grant me the revelation that will allow me to comprehend the mir nature of this miracle. Alright, Ravor, let's go. May the Emperor protect. Yo! 
some got replaced, kind of. By evil doom. You're that or that's Riker by Norris, and it's pretty rough out there. So the main thing also about not saving the commoners is that there's no commoners on board related to them that will complain to us about it. <laughs> Besides Argenta. <laughs> That too, we could have saved both groups and then nuked the place, which probably would have also been a good option, but I wasn't sure if that was this then. We got kind of locked in by our choices there between the two binary. So maybe I should have tried to do the evacuation stuff first. Oh! The Fon Valencia's flagship made its way out of the doomed star system. As the void shift plunged deeper into the Corona's expanse, the rogue trader's subjects bid a formal farewell to the late head of the dynasty, Theodora von Valencius. Having paid their last respects, the crew gathered their strength and braced themselves for whatever was to come next. Achievement! Alright, finally done with chapter one. It just took, you know, forever. Lord Captain, allow me to report. Our drain to the warp is coming to an end. Lady Navigator Celia informs us that we have reached a point where we can translate to real space in the Furry Bundus system. Uh, Lady Navigator and her pilots are awaiting permission to begin the process. All right, cool. We're going to Footfall Station. The only outpost of functioning wharf in the Kronos Expanse. The tech priests are begging you to have mercy on the machines worn down by the warp and allow the service to Omnicide to inspect and heal the void ship wounds in the dock. The prayers and rituals will take some time while our astropathic choir will, will use to establish a connection to the Prime World Leader Protectorate, uh, Dargos Jonas, and Kieva Gamma. Okay, so our telecommunications. Uh, Zachary Wise has recovered an invitation previously adrift in the Immaterium. The Legion of Footfalls humbly requested an audience with the rogue trader of the Von Valencius dynasty. Um, according to Master Zachary, the message was tinted with shades of a pleading, I quote, apparently the Legion is anxious to meet as soon as possible. Footfall, a place where filth and sanctity go hand in hand. Reverend Hier Hieronymus Doloroso uh, will likely expect a visit from me. I imagine he'll be interested in talking to you as well. Question, question, question. I'll be leaving your void ship when we arrive on Footfall. Once that's done, considering the Lord Inquisitor's task complete. Your Lordship, young Eveline Winterscale, has asked me to convey his gratitude and your hospitality for saving him from certain death. Not wishing to outstay his welcome, he plans to disembark at Footfall. Lord Evan swears he will not forgive his debt. Forget his debt to you. <laughs> not forgive. I uh, hereby inform the rogue trader that during the comprehensive inspection rite, the unit discovered data clusters within the captain's cogitator that are concealed from prying eyes by means of a personal cipher and a sacrament of algorithm authorization. Unit U has offer, has been added to access list and identified as Keeper 2. The unit can access data from the captain's cogitator provided he possesses the decryption key. Detective hint at something resembling curiosity. Are you leaving us, Heinrichs? range between Lord Inquisitor and your predecessor was that I be transported to Footfall and no further. I dare not take advantage of generosity and patience where I have more than I already have. Uh, let's do this. Um, this is a little too out of the formality that I'd expect an Inquisitor to respond positively to, so we'll do this, and he'll probably reappear. Plus, it forces us to bring Adira back out. <laughs> Interrogator of the Inquisition seldom here gets to hear such words. Thank you for the hospitality. I will not forget it. Argenta! Who the hell is this? Uh, head of Durian mission on Footfall and one of our most prominent clergymen of the sector. Paying him a visit is a good thing for any loyal servant of the Emperor to do, 
I said his mission before I joined Lady Theodore on his voyage. I need his blessing to accompany the new rogue trader. If you wish to have me aboard your warship, we need to go meet him. Cool. Big this. Uh, Furry Bundus, the uh, gateway to Imperium, mostly known for Footfall, the main base, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Adeptus Mechanicus Station, which we might be able to at least have some information with. Alter Temporum Calaxis, extension number 17. I had the honor of trending to the shrine for a few thousand cycles. Um, is cycles days or years? I don't think he's that old. <laughs> if it's years, so I'm going to assume days. It's just you abstain from visiting it as the most tech com from you I yeah, words. I suggest you abstain from visiting it as most tech comrades at the station are engaged in meditative calculations that should not be interrupted. Um Abelard, what do you know? Fadem Tokar is peculiar peculiar young man, considering your upcoming con conversation, a baptism of fire fit false political arena. Such things are not spoken out loud, but Lee Takar is the appointee of the Casabalica Mission, the largest robber baron crime syndicate of the Calaxis section. They specialize in cold trade to buying and selling all things of Xenos rubbish. Cool. Footfall, previously run by a leech who did business with several criminal factions at once, but he suffered a quote unquote accident. The reins of power were picked up by Zadiam Takara, whose appointment benefits not only the Kaspalika, uh, but the most powerful ally in the current expanse, Rotator with the scale. Valdium is a slippery yet cautious fellow. He does not usually beat around the bush and does not play mind games. Perhaps more importantly, he is no fool. Fools do not rise to this high rank in the Kaspalikan hierarchy. Keep that in mind. You are the Rotator, you stand above him in status and wield considerable power. Having said that, has seen, history has seen cases where the Kaspalikan barons crossed swords with the Rotator and emerged victor victorious. Do not forget that. Remain vigilant. Vile tech thieves. Alright. Let's go. We've got a lot of leveling of Adira to do. Master ship appears to change for every word. The bridge is set in motion. Hundreds of people start to prepare for the shift to real space, and measure chanting fills the corridors to safeguard the vessel and its crew. One more thing, Lord Captain. No one in the station knows about Lady Theodore's demise and you inheriting the title. The Leech Takara will be informed it is required that, so that we can use the docks, and besides, he is expecting a personal audience with the rogue trader. He will not meet with an unknown person of unclear standing. However, there is still a matter of announcing your arrival. You can either arrive at the station with the proper pomp and ceremony, or you can choose to visit incognito. Alright, why would I do either? Rogue Trader enjoys special privileges that exceed the power of the leech, that, however, they may not choose to exercise those privileges in certain situations. Arriving incognito will give you more room to maneuver, while an official visit will allow you to directly interfere, intervene in local affairs. I shall explain. As per the unwritten rule, every rogue trader arriving at the station has the right to veto any of the Legion's decisions. But there is a catch. Codus Expanse is home to several influential rogue trader dynasties and footfalls where their interests intersect. Of course, does not prevent certain persons, namely Caligos Winterscale, from suddenly pulling the strings of footfall. If you, as a new rogue trader, start your career with an official landing and parade in your honor, the other dynasties may see the gesture as the newcomer challenging their spheres of influence. I do not see that as a bad thing, necessarily. Old Man Winter Scale might take slight offense, Corda will be up put on her guard, but you'll, you have just risen to prominence, and most of the people in the Chronic Span have not even heard of Lady Theodore's departure yet. Make clear that the banner of Von Valencia is as high as ever. If I may, I would recommend arriving incognito. You will be plenty of opportunities to savor the sweetness and burden of power, but right now is the last time you can refu take refuge in obscurity. This way, your arrival will not draw much attention. People will treat you as a person, not the almighty sovereign, and which by the ever, it could turn some situations to your advantage. Uh, he has a good point. This is, like, literally the last time we could pull this off. So I think we'll do incognito. Um, obviously, they've laid out good reasons for doing so, but Henrix is making a very good point about being, like, you know, this is our last chance to not, uh be burdened by these things. So we're going to go up to Ignite It will be done. Great tradition. I return to my duties. Holy crap. That was just an hour of dialogue. And a lot of leveling for a deer that I am not going to do on camera. Alright, well, uh, that was the translation to real space and just the end of Record by Norris. So 
We made our decisions, we'll stick with them, and we're on to explore an entire new area. And with that, we're gonna end this.